think these are Easter lilies? You know, you make some things in class and you're like, I forgot what I made like a week ago. So back to the process real quick. Sorry, tangent. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be talking about another fun ceramics project. Today's project is gonna be dealing with elevating a portrait design. So a few years back, I had a class with Mako Ceramics materials they have they have a bunch of glazes most of us know them for glazes and one of the inserts that they did was they brought in these tiles and they gave us kind of carte blanche to do whatever we wanted to but we're having to create objects out of raw clay setting them on a tile and then firing the tile using the glazes understanding glaze chemistry i understand the concept pretty quickly. So, but how can I alter this, modify this, change this to do something that I normally do already? So a few years back, I started making these tiles with some holes in them. And on the other side, I would actually paint a mini portrait or, or design or something on the other side. So I have Groot here, uh, which I have a video for, make sure you check that out, uh, where I took a photograph and I didn't take a photo. I took a print offline and drew that Groot on the tile. And I thought, how can we elevate this even more? So I started coming up with a project, especially in this virtual environment, because we have some students in the class, some students at home. This is a two part assignment because I did one for the at home student and one for the student in the classroom. So this project, uh, uh, kind of fell in my lap because I have another, we had a somebody who retired from the, the building a couple of years back and she passed recently. And because she passed, they wanted me to do a memorial piece for her. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll happy to do that. Took my tile concept of doing the normal tile and thought, hey, let's elevate this portrait. So the piece that I came out with, this piece here, the memorial piece is her portrait on the center in the center of the tile and then i elevated it by adding some uh tulip designs i think these are easter lilies you know you make some things in class and you're like i forgot what i made like a week ago so i think these are easter lilies and i found out her favorite color was purple so threw purple down on the flowers so let's go ahead through the process of how we went through about making this now for this process it starts out relatively simple you're going to roll out a sheet of clay get your slab of clay out and once you have your slab you're going to cut off into your size that you're going to need now for me i used a uh basically a 12 by 12 square fire that off get it to the bisque stage so that when it comes out you can draw on it really easily now what i do recommend if you have the option and you can get carbon paper carbon paper and actually tracing out those designs it makes life a lot easier because it just is one less step of having to draw things out now i also have in the past drawn things out you can draw it out directly with graphite the graphite pencil works just fine graphite pencil the carbon paper all that kind of stuff is going to burn off a hundred percent while it's in the kiln once it hit, hits those, um, once the kiln hits the temperatures higher than an oven, it's going to start incinerating basic elements, carbon based items. That's why when you have a cleaning cycle on your oven, your cleaning cycle on the oven goes to about eight to 900 degrees and completely incinerates everything that's inside of it. Now, this is more with older ovens, newer ovens. I don't know if it does the exact same way, but that's what it's doing. It's taking the heat of the oven and raising it to such a level that everything inside of it is just completely burned off. With ceramics, we can fire so much higher that certain elements have to change chemically during that firing process. So once I've taken the design, I've put it, started, I've laid down the design on the piece. Now I have to get into my glaze applications. Now for this glazing piece, I use a low fire glaze because it's low fire clay. Uh, this is a combination of a very old school Amico um, metallic brown and then to that I add raw umber so I'm adding a raw chemical ingredient to this pre-glaze mix to all I'm doing is I'm changing the amount of colorant added into the mix uh, now what I do is I do it all by hand and it's all really by sight because I've done this enough times to where I understand that during the firing process I have to paint it on slightly darker than what I need it to be because it will burn off a little bit during the firing process this is one of those things where it's a it's a trial by error and that's the kind of the best suggestion I can make for you because there's no real rhyme or reason why certain things work and certain things don't you can understand if you understand glaze chemistry and what chemicals you're going to get out of the kiln at any given time yes you will have a pretty defined element of what should happen but there is that bit of mystery because you don't know if that glaze when you're adding those chemical components does change a little bit of the 
flux, which means it's going to run if it's going to become uh, extra soupy in the mix. Uh, because while we're mixing glazes, if you're mixing a couple different gloss glazes, you're now adding more flux into the equation that does change what kind of color comes out. Knowing this kind of stuff ahead of time does make life easier, but does not make everything 100%? So I always go in with a with a grain of salt as this might not work out the way I did, wanted it to. Case in point, I will tell you now, one of the, the worst mistakes I ever made was I have another video, it's me painting a, the uh, Logan tile. Uh, Logan, if you haven't seen the movie, it's a wonderful movie. It's the last Wolverine solid movie by him. Uh, it is it is not a happy movie at all, but I thought it was brilliant. I loved it. Um, but again, it's the most gut-wrenching, awful. It's, it's a really rough thing to sit through, but it's a fantastic film. Um, if you're very well invested in that saga with Wolverine. Moving back to what I'm talking about though, uh, once I painted the tile, I was like, I want to give this thing a gloss finish and give it that final coat. Well, I have an older bottle of gloss glaze and I thought I'd mix it up properly. I didn't. Uh, so what happens when you, when you have a glaze in general, you have two components of the glaze. It's a clay body and it's usually formulated to the clay that it's supposed to go on. So if you have a low fire glaze, the low fire glaze is made with a low fire body clay inside of it and then colorments and flux and things that make it glossy and give it a different color element. Those are added to the glaze. That's the basic glaze chemistry in a nutshell. So I added that glaze to the top of the tile. Once it's already been fired, those powders were already set. So I didn't have to worry about putting on a slathering of glaze because it was already baked into the surface of the clay. Problem was is that the glaze was not probably mixed up well enough by myself and that's a fault of my own. When I brought the tile out of the glaze, I miss, was missing half of his face because some of the glaze had kind of washed over the design that I did because it, it got thick and cloudy and muddy, the application process, and that's my fault and I lost a piece because of that and I fully understand how that happens and I'm not mad at myself, I'm disappointed uh, because that was it was a good amount of work and I really enjoyed the piece and I was really happy to have it done, but at the same time, then I screwed it up and I gotta deal with it. So knowing that stuff ahead of time makes your life a lot easier. So back to the process real quick, sorry, tangent. So once you have the basic elements done on the tile where you've created your design work and you've got that laid out, now we're gonna get into clay additions. How are we gonna add clay to really exemplify the design that we've got. So all we're doing is we're trying to elevate the things that are on the on the board. Uh, for me, it was flowers. I wanted to do, I started off with a, with a weird rose kind of design. I figured this would work and then it didn't work. I didn't like it. So I started researching the Easter lilies, found the Easter lilies to be a lot easier to A, build and B, I think it'd come out a lot better. So started knocking those things out, building the petals, building the stems, building the leaves and placing them onto the tile. Now, this is raw clay. This has not been bisque fired. I'm fire, I'm taking a raw clay, putting it on a bisque tile, and then I'm gonna fire it with the glaze. So as I'm adding the glaze to those flowers, I'm making sure to coat everything. Now, one of the big things in ceramics is we tell our students, and I tell my students also, do not glaze the bottom of the piece because the glaze will stick to the kiln shelf. But this time I want you to do that. I want you to paint that whole item that you're gonna sit on top of your tile because as it heats up in the kiln, that glass, the fusion element of the glaze that's on that raw clay is going to bind 100% to the tile that it's sitting on, depending if it's a gloss glaze. If it's a gloss glaze, it's gonna stick. If it's an underglaze, it might not stick. So do make sure that you're using a gloss. You want to have it, that, that tackiness element. So the once the gloss glaze is heated up to that, so once that glaze is heated up to the proper temperature, it becomes tacky. It's like it's like honey on the side of something and you're putting your, it, it's really, really sticky. So once those two pieces are touching, as it starts to go through the cool down process, those two sticky things now are stuck together permanently and they're not coming apart, they're fused together. So using that as the idea for the tile, it comes out really well. So I'm having my students make, I have one who she's doing like a beach scene. So she got this like a beach umbrella and then like the bit of a towel, which that was a lot harder to build than I thought it'd be um, coming off the piece. And so those are in the kill now. And hopefully um, I'll have some pics on my Instagram at some point here. So just kind of stay posted on there. Uh, to finally, to finish off this tile, um, I made a little stand out of some just basic clay and 
debating about adding another coat of glaze to this, doing like a brown kind of overtones with it so it's kind of woody. I don't know, I'll play with it. So that we have our final piece as it sits together like so. So th again, this came out as kind of a piece that I was asked to make for another colleague and happy to do that kind of stuff. But then I was like, hey, let's turn this into a project. So what can we do with it? So elevating a portrait design, fun project to do. I hope you guys can do something like this. You guys as class two would just have some uh, fun and interesting things to make. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all the various platforms to make sure we get the message out there. Educate as many teachers and students as we possibly can. As always, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise your hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions of my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later, guys.